Hello, my name is Jeff Pratt, and I'm here to teach you how to make a successful Performance Max campaign for your e-commerce business. You're going to start out by selecting a new campaign, and right away it's going to give you a couple different options to choose from. But for the e-commerce business and where we like to focus things for e-commerce, we're going to focus on sales for the campaign objective. So you're going to click on that sales objective, and you're going to scroll down, and then it's going to show you different conversion options. You probably should already have these set up before, uh, but these are the most important actions that we're going to focus on for our advertising. You're going to click continue, and then it's going to ask you what type of campaign, but for today's lesson, we're going to be focusing on that Performance Max campaign. So you're going to select that Performance Max, and then you're going to name that Performance Max campaign. Then it's gonna ask you about the bidding strategy you wanna focus on. So there's a few options here. There's conversions for maximized conversions or maximized conversion value. So it all depends on what's most important for your business. Uh, for maximized conversion value, you can set different values at what is most important. So if it's phone calls or if it's a form submission on your website or if it's actually the sale. So you can set up how much money you wanna have for each conversion. Or if you want just as many conversions as possible, you can focus on just maximize conversions. Below our bidding strategies here, we have our customer acquisition. This is if we want to focus on acquiring just new customers solely. And so if we select that option, we can scroll down a little bit and then we can add a, a certain value to uh, what we think would be uh, worthy of grabbing a new customer. You know, Google can give you a few different options of what you can do there. Um, I usually just kind of go with what Google recommends at this moment, but you can select what's most important for you and your business. Next, you're gonna be looking at your location targeting here. You can check out, this is where you're gonna be having your geo target. This is all the different places that you can put, uh, what cities you're wanting to focus on. Um, so for this example, I'm gonna put in Seattle. And you can do a couple different options. You can do a radius around Seattle. You can do, uh, you can actually type in just that city and it will give you a little geo target around the city instead of a radius, just like that. Um, so there's a few different options that you can choose from. There's also a way you can pin uh, if you're in a specific spot, you don't have the exact address, uh, but that's where you're gonna wanna have your geo target set up. Then you can look at your languages. If you have different languages to focus on, uh, you know, if you know that there's, you know, people who speak Chinese and they buy your product, that's where you can focus on the different languages here. Next, you're going to want to turn off automatically created assets here. Um, we really want to focus on what we want to put out there and not what Google's going to want to put out there. So this is just a little pro tip um, to just unselect that because we want to be in control of what's being advertised out there with our name on it. So under there is a little bit more settings that we can look through. Um, you can choose which days that are gonna have your ad show. Um, if you have Monday through Friday customers that you know that are only shopping those days at these certain times, this is where you're gonna adjust those different um, attributes right there. So then you can also do start and end dates. So for example, if you know you wanna start on the first of the month uh, in the few next week or so, or you have an end date where the offer no longer runs anymore, so you can end the campaign at the perfect time. Next, we have our campaign URL tracking options. This is so we can track where somebody's coming from from that campaign, heading to the website. We can follow what type of pages they're going to. So this is where you would put in the specifics of about the campaign, you know, what type of ad groups or where it's coming from, um, so this is where you can kind of track your, your customer coming from your campaign into your website. Just a little few more options that you can choose from if you have any brand exclusions, like for example, you don't want to have your brand next to any others. Um, if there's any competitors you really don't want to be next to, that's where you can do it. Now we're in our asset groups. Now you're going to name that asset group, you know, something that you're targeting uh, for this campaign. Um, but as you can see at the top here, it's asking for images, it's asking for headlines, it's asking for descriptions, and it's even asking for videos. So we're going to want to fill out each one of those aspects as much as we possibly can. So you're going to fill out that final URL at the top. Uh, I'm not going to show exactly every single thing that I put out here because it's going to take a little while. But um, first off, we're going to start with our images. And right now you're going to want to add in as many images as you possibly can. I think you can add in 20 total images here, but the most important part is to add in images that have at least all three ratios for the images here. Because the reason why we want that is because Google can put out those images to as many people and many placements as possible 
Um, so we want to fill out those images as much as we possibly can. Then we're going to look up the, the logo. You want to add in your logo. You have up to five different options for your logo. Um, I at least recommend one. I think you have to at least have one, but um, the more the merrier there. The next you're going to be looking at your video section here. So this is uh, luckily, you don't actually have to have videos. You can have Google create some for you if you don't have any. But if you do have some, make sure they're on your YouTube channel because that's how they are implemented. You have to have a YouTube link in order to add in those videos. Uh, now on to the headlines and descriptions. You're going to want to fill out those as much as you possibly can. The reason why, you want to make sure that uh, Google's artificial intelligence can have many different options to put for those headlines and descriptions and make different pairings and combinations because it wants to find what's most important and what's going to get as many people to click and go through on the ad. So you're going to want to fill out as many of those headlines and descriptions as you possibly can. Try to be creative and up at the top you can see how well you're doing. It will give you an ad strength uh, and you want to be at least in the good uh, strength level. Now, once you're done with your headlines and descriptions, you're gonna add in your business name, uh, and then you're gonna see a couple different things that you can update here, like the call to action. I usually like to keep this at automated, because um, you know Google's artificial intelligence knows a little bit more than we do, and it puts the right different combinations at the right time. Now, below your call to action here, you're gonna have your different ad assets that you can add into your campaign. So you probably should already have these set up from your uh, ads account already, but this would be like your site links, your call extension, your structured snippet, stuff like that. If you wanna make sure you can fill out as many of those as you possibly can that are applicable to this campaign type. Um, and so any, the more that you have, the more that Google can use them to your advantage there. So fill out as many of those ad assets as possible. Next, we're gonna be focusing on our signals. So this is where we're gonna be telling Performance Max and Google where we want to be focusing on for this, these certain people. So this is kind of, take it like uh, like their keywords technically for this campaign. So if you look at this example, I did shoes for men, shoes for women. So if you have all different types of shoes, you can do slippers, you can do boots. So just kind of put in as many as you, uh, as you can uh, about your topic or your product. Then we're gonna be focusing on the audience signal. So this is where you can do a couple different things. Use your own data, so if you have some customer lists that you can focus on, some email lists. Now we're gonna look at our interest and detailed demographics. For the interest here, you're gonna add in a few different things that are related to your product. For this example, I use shoes, so just kind of put as many of the different interests that relate to your product as you possibly can. Um, after that, you're gonna add in your detailed demographics. So this is where you can focus on if you know your audience is a certain age group, um, a certain gender, you can focus on wh who you're trying to target here. So if you want to just focus on female versus male or how old somebody is, this is where you're going to make those uh, adjustments here in the campaign. You're going to want to name the audience name and then you can save it for later and always have it for other campaigns. Then it's going to ask you about your budget. So there's Google is going to give you a few different options to choose from. Um, Usually it likes to spend as much as it possibly can, but if you have a certain set budget, I would definitely put it in here. Use your calculator to find out how much you wanna spend for every single day, um, and then add in your budget here. Then it's gonna ask you just to review all your different campaign objectives here and making sure that everything looks good. But there you go, you have your Performance Max campaign set up uh, and you're ready to go. Thank you for watching my lecture on creating a Performance Max campaign for e-commerce businesses. My name is Jeff Pratt, 